The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Martin. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. It's New Year's Eve, and things are volatile, to say the least. Market's running on up and uh, starting to retreat from its highs right now. we got Obama coming on live here in about 23 minutes, and uh, so the market's starting to wonder what that's going to sound like. But, uh, so, um, you know, without saying something's going to be coming out, which... I don't think any of us completely, uh, you know, really bank on happening. It's probably going to be more of the same of urging we need to get this done and we need to quit, you know, stop holding people hostage and people need to vote and it needs to go to the floor and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, uh, the rumors coming out is that there's some sort of deal that's in the works that's going to be uh, voted on um, that should come out that says that the... Uh, you know, basically, they want to allow tax hikes to only affect people making. I want to say right now it's four hundred fifty thousand is the new rumor, and um, then the uh, unemployment claims would be extended. And uh, but there's still obviously a ton of other issues to be had. I've been watching a C-SPAN a little bit this morning, watching what the senators are saying, and uh, they're pretty uh, to their guns, um, and basically saying, you know, we can give Obama every single thing he wants, everything he's asking for. And it will cover seven days of spending. Not even quite seven days of spending. And that's if we give him everything he is asking for. And uh, so they're like, we really don't see the point. No, we're not going to vote on something that's not going to address spending. So if you want to raise taxes, then we want to see uh, cut spending. And that's, that's just not on the table. So um, I, you know, I don't think they're going to get it passed. You know, they might get it down to a floor vote, maybe, at the Senate. But uh, getting it past the uh, Republicans in the House, especially the Tea Party group, um, even if they said they were cutting spending, if it includes raising taxes on anybody, still not sure if they're going to be able to get that thing passed. So uh, we're going to find out, and I'm sure we're going to hear uh, the tone of that message here in the next 20 minutes or so. And uh, I am straddling the market right now. <laughs> um, if some miraculous thing happens, the market does fly up, make some money on the way up, and uh, if it crashes on down, uh, basically all this optimism that's been built into the market this morning, and it's been pure optimism based on speculation, based on old news and old rumors, um, not based upon what's been happening behind those closed doors. And again, whatever happened behind those closed doors still has to happen on the floor. So um, and not only the Senate, but the House. So, um, you know, I, 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 I would not be surprised to see everything we've seen uh, go up in the market today be given up. But we'll see what happens. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and do a quick market wrap on where the market's at. We got the S&P. It is up 21 points right now um, off of Friday settlement price. We got the NASDAQ up 43. We got the Dow up 133. And we got the Russell up 14. The Russell took a while, and then it started taking off. The Dow's actually been the slower one out of the group. So only up 1% on the day compared to the others being up over 1.5%, almost 2%. And then looking over at gold, it has been flying up 22 points this morning already. We got copper. It is up 1.6%. Right now, silver up 1.3%. We got corn, you know, pretty flat on the day, up a few points. And we got soybeans down a few points. So ag's not really being, obviously, the main focus of the day. And then looking on over, looking at oil, it is up 64 cents on the dollar right now with natural gas down a whopping 3% on the day already. Looking over at our currency pairs, the currency war is going on right now. We got Euro dollar down 17. We got pound dollar up 80. So uh, dollar getting weaker against the Euro, but uh, or uh, getting stronger against the Euro, getting weaker against the pound, uh, significantly weaker. Aussie dollar up 14 pips. US yen up 69 pips. A lot of strength in the dollar against the yen right there. No big surprise with all the monetary weakness going on. And looking over at the US Canadian. We see it is down uh, 28 pips on the day right now with the DAX up a little bit. So it's some dollar strength now. And uh, the bond still in negative territory for the day. And that's basically our quick market wrap on where everything is currently sitting. And I'm um, looking on over here 
I'll pull up, you know, what other fundamentals we have because there's really not much of anything. But um, we do have the uh, the equity withdrawal. That number actually came out quarter over quarter. It came in a lot better than expected for the pound. That's one of the big uh, reasons we're seeing this big resilience in the pound. I'll go ahead and pull that up and show you what I'm talking about. But I'm um, right over here on the pound dollar. Uh, we can see where it shot up right there early this morning. It just took on off. And uh, that, that report did come out a little bit earlier in the morning. It came out a few hours earlier. We didn't see a whole lot happen off of it. But with everything that's been going on, the pound shot up. It had some good news, so it had a reason to do so. And uh, with everything else going on. Um, in New Zealand, you know, we don't, uh, they have their actual, they have their banks closed. Australia also has their banks closed today. And Japan has their banks closed today. And we'll have them closed for the four bank holiday for Japan. Um, China also has their banks closed, but they had a PMI number come in. Actually, one of the highest numbers in years. And uh, that number came out at 8 o'clock. Um, let's see here. It comes out, oh, it comes out at 8 o'clock. The expectation is going to come out a lot higher. But um, it comes out at 8 o'clock tonight. It came in, the forecast is 51. So if that number does come out as expected, that'll be some uh, market strength. Of course, it'll be stunning because the markets will be closed. But the, um, the, the final manufacturing PMI did come out. <laughs> that came out at 845 last night. And that is uh, came out at 51.5, which is, I'm looking back, I don't see a higher number than that since back in May of 2011. We had 51.6. So that's one of the best uh, PMI numbers. And um, that's where they go in and they survey a bunch of purchasing managers and ask them about, you know, business conditions and things of that sort. And if you ever want to get PMI data, one of the great websites to go over to, uh, marketeconomics.com, M-A-R-K-I-T, economics.com. And you can read all about the PMI numbers from different countries, China, et cetera, and, uh, you know, read the report and see what it said and all the details on it. And they'll take you right into it. And, you know, you can. there are translators as well that you can take advantage of, but they'll give you the direct releases. And um, that's the Chinese one there. Here we go. English ought to be right here. And so you can go in and you can actually read that. And uh, you're on, there we go, right there in English. So you can check that out. But it's a great website, marketeconomics.com. Very simple, but its focus is mainly on PMIs. And uh, so that's what we had happen with the pound dollar. And the Aussie dollar did have a little bit of information. The private next sector borrowing like it came in at lower than expected last night. And if we could Aussie dollar over here, that number came out at 7.30, 6.30 central time. And so we drop on back here, and we can see that when that number came out, market got a little crazy, and uh, then finally gave it all up there, and you know it's been just moving around ever since. But we definitely see a drop in the Aussie based on that report that did come out last night. And again, that was the private sector credit report, and that basically is the new credit issued for consumers and businesses. And uh, that number is going negative, meaning that's not you know good for the growth of their economy. Looking on over. And um, we'll see. So we got China's PMI coming out tonight. We'll go ahead and take a quick snapshot look at the upcoming week. Every, pretty much everything, but Australia is closed down tomorrow. And um, so they'll have an AIG manufacturing index, but basically everything's closed down tomorrow. So uh, not much to report on that day. We'll go on into Wednesday, and we're going to get a British manufacturing PMI and the ISM manufacturing PMI here in the U.S. to open up the U.S. market. And we'll walk on into Thursday. Where we're going to have, uh, it's going to be, you know, a bit. We're going to have the ADP non-farm employment change and unemployment claims um, coming in on Thursday. ADP non-farm coming in at 8:15. Unemployment claims coming in just 15 minutes later at 8:30. And uh, we'll also have the FOMC meeting minutes coming out. Usually, a high impact report shouldn't see a whole lot come out of that report, um, just because. I mean, of course, this whole fiscal cliff may have people a little bit more on edge about the report, but there shouldn't be any big surprises in that report. But, uh, you know, just be aware that's coming out 2 o'clock on Thursday. So you got to get 8.15 ADP non-farm payroll. you got 8.30 unemployment claims. And you got 2 o'clock FOMC. And then Friday, we'll be finishing the week off with the services PMI coming out of the pen, uh, British pound there. We'll have the employment change and unemployment rate coming out of Canada. Uh, we'll also have RMPI and IPPI coming out of Canada. And then we're going to have non-farm employment change, unemployment rate, average monthly earnings, ISM non-manufacturing PMI. So all that information, uh, looks like we have, what, one, like, during that 8.30 time, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven reports coming out of the U.S. and Canada. And, um, and then a few more reports coming out of the U.S. right after that. Again, having another crude oil natural gas Friday inventory report release like we had last week. We'll have that again this week. And um, so just be aware that obviously U.S. Canada ought to have a lot of volatility on Friday. 
Uh, we talked about that last week. I had a lot of volatility due to, due to so many reports coming out at once. And so uh, be one of the main current affairs you may want to check out in the morning, possibly do a straddle on because you should expect a nice big move off of that. Um, and uh, so you will also have a couple other things, but nothing major that you want to be worried about. Just, uh, But, I mean, just obviously employment numbers being huge. And, uh, of course, everybody, no matter what you put out there, are going to be focused on one thing and uh, one thing only, really, and that's going to be, you know, this fiscal cliff. And uh, the real cliff, of course, has nothing to do with um, taxes, um, even though that's the only thing really being discussed. Uh, the real cliff has to do with the country spending more money than it takes in. And, um, and it continues to increase that spending. Obama actually has requested multiple times to ask for the ability to have no cap on how much he spends. So even though he spent more than any president in history, it's like I think he's already pretty much got that. But over a trillion dollars a year, uh, putting our country into additional debt. And it's amazing um, the tongue-in-cheek going on here because you got, you know, we need to tax the rich. We need to tax the rich. At the same time, we need to spend additional money and do more quantitative easing and do all these other things and borrow more money, which means we're taxing everybody. And more than anything, that taxes the poor because they don't have assets that actually can appreciate in value. So, uh, you know, the middle class has, you know, cash, which taxes their savings. Um, and so, I mean, he really is ultimately he's taxing the middle class and the poor more than anything with his increased spending. And, uh, but that just doesn't seem to resonate with, uh, the Democrat, uh, Senate leaders out there. They seem to be thinking that we just need to come together and compromise and make this thing work, but they don't ever seem to mention spending is out of control. They just keep talking about taxes, uh, cause that's a popular, easy subject. You know, they don't want to talk about the, the heart of the matter. So. You know, uh, it's, I mean, it's absolutely amazing what's going on. But let's go ahead and check it out, zoom on in, and we got just some incredible volatility. And uh, by the way, if you want to trade volatility, one of the many ways that you can do it is check out Nadex. You can hop on over um, on TFNN.com. Go ahead and click on the banner right there in Nadex. And you can get, you can actually log in and you can, you know, play the fiscal cliff. Have a little fun with this thing today. You can do it on a demo account. Click under our product, demo account, and then uh, fill in the information. It takes about 15 seconds. Put in your username, first name, last name, phone number and email address. Once you do that, they will send you a uh, password in your email and you'll be able to log in right away and see what these binaries and spreads are all about. And uh, you can literally buy it above the market, below the market. Um, you can use uh, strat, basically straddling is what that is. Uh, you can also go in and you can do spreads. So those are more like trading the underlying market. So there's a lot of different ways you can trade, whether it be binaries or spreads. And if you want to learn how to trade these things, how they work, Hop on over here and click on Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer. I go into Nadex. I talk about the boxes. I talk about binaries. I go in and I basically give tutorials on each one of them and um, give you access to tools and deviation levels and a whole lot more to help you out in your trading. Whether you're a futures trader, forex trader, whether you like trading index ETFs, whatever, this is a tool that you could definitely use. So I definitely uh, suggest that you check it out. Two-week free trial. No risk to you. Go ahead and check it out right now. We'll be right back after this break. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, welcome back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. We got Obama coming up in just about five minutes, and uh, stay tuned because the market's going to get interesting. Um, so we'll uh, be watching this and seeing exactly what he says and how he says it. And um, the markets are going to get very, very interesting. So I would uh, be moving on down to your uh, one minute bars right about now <laughs> would be my suggestion. Okay. And then, uh, you know, if you're in Nadex, there's a lot of different ways you can play this, but you could go in right now and you could just literally hop in and uh, pull up, you know, pick your market. Let me see here. I'll log into my one of my accounts. And I'll just show you this for some fun here. I'm um, trading on this. Uh, one second. Let's see. All right. And he usually is not on time, by the way, so don't be surprised if he's late. Um, so let's see here. All right. So we go in here, pull up uh, Nadex. All right. And then we can grab some charts. Oh. And uh, so give me one second to open that up for you. And get this chart right here from the Russell. There we go. Got a little Microsoft.net question. Okay. All right. So there we go. So we got the uh, Russell up there. And let me check one more thing. We'll also want to go in. You may want to check the Dow. So it's been responding quite a bit to everything that's been going on. 
And uh, you may want to go in with a couple other things and look at, let's see, we could look at the NASDAQ, we can look at the Dow, and we could look at the S&P 500. You could also check out gold. could be a really uh, excellent uh, market to look into right now. And let's say we got gold is actually starting to edge back down after its massive move up that it's had earlier today. So make sure you do check that out. And um, then go in and just pull up Nadex. So let me pull that up again for you. One more chance here. Got to reopen. My Chrome had so many different things open at one time that uh, computer got a little upset. <laughs> All right. So got that one up and running. And here we go. All right. There we go. Good. One more thing. Sorry about that. Just every once in a while, computer goes a little crazy. Got too many things moving too fast. So get ready because the market's about to do the same thing. And uh, they're going to see, you know, what is this? What does Mr. Obama have to say? What does President Obama have to say? And um, so we're going to pull it up. We're going to check it out. Um, what I'm also going to pull up is looking over at the diagnostic deviation levels. So let me log into that. And what we can do is we can basically line up like a binary spread, okay? Or uh, binary straddle. We can go in. We could also straddle it, but there'd have to be a really good straddle at this point with this massive run up. It's going to be a little hard to do a straddle on spreads, but you could possibly put one in on binaries. And so, what we want to do is look at something like deviation levels. And that's one of the things I use often, um, pretty much every day when I trade. I am using the deviation levels. And uh, we post those every day inside the members area over here so you can check them out. So, we got right there. And then uh, looking at this, okay, so if we go into, say, indices binaries, let's just say we check out the S&P. Let's we'll see if there is any uh, decent ones that we can get a hold of. There we go. Okay, so we got a 1418. All right, well, the market easily move up to 1422. That's one of the deviation levels. Okay, if some great news comes out. So we can open that one up. And then looking on the low side, um, basically we're sitting right now at 1408 or so. So the uh, market could go back down to 1394 pretty easily, by possibly even back down to 1384. So I'm um, doing the full gap fill. And uh, if we just pick, we'll just pick an equal risk reward trade right now. So we'll check out this one, 82. This is a 1397. Okay, that actually is a 0.7 deviation level. This is a 2 deviation level. We're right in the middle of that. So by putting those two on, we'll go in. We throw on a few on each side. Okay. Um, if the market, and we'll go ahead and put these on. Now, if the market expires inside of either one of these areas, we make about two hundred and you know thirty bucks or so. Take out fifty bucks from the other side, lose, and that's one hundred and eighty dollars. Um, but if it just gets to that area, then uh, we can also make quite a bit on the trade. So both ways um, have a you know a lot of profit built in on the trade. So we'll put that in and put that area right there. Okay, so now we have the trades on. And uh, we have a couple ways we can do it, okay? We can leave them on until expiration, thinking, hey, the market's really either going to close up high today or it's going to move down, um, you know, and close, you know, basically pretty low today, uh, below 1397, which actually would be low at this point. Um, and so with that, either one of these trades has a very high profit ratio, I guess, at over $200 profit. And uh, we risked, you know, a combined total of $100 on the trade. So it's a two-to-one risk-reward ratio total. But uh, we should only lose 50 bucks on one side, make 200 on the other. So net should actually end up being, uh, you know, quite a nice return. So stay right there, folks. We'll be right back after this break. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
you've heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor, and now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And as I predicted, Obama is late. We're all waiting on him right there. And uh, so let's see here. Uh, just waiting to see uh, when and he comes on and what he's going to say. But uh, basically, here is the summary of what we're expecting to come out. Okay, The fiscal deal would include permanent alternative minimum tax fix, uh, meaning that it would, you know, nobody knows what it means. But uh, extend unemployment insurance benefits for one year. Um, also, it would basically permanently extend um, the tax fix for those who make a certain amount of money. Okay, um, It would extend a research tax credit. Um, it would extend wind production tax credit, uh, which which is really interesting because the wind energy companies have said we don't need it. But um, however, that is going in there, and um, it includes a dock fix as well. So because uh, basically doctors are about to lose another thirty five percent on the already underpaid amounts they get from Medicaid, and um, so you know they're going to extend that as well. I mean that's how they bought the election. That's they're going to continue that one on. Um, the fiscal deal propose, is going to postpone uh, sequestering, um, supposedly, and include some $600 billion in revenue as well. Um, in revenue, that's, that's always an interesting word, meaning money they can spend, I guess. Um, but it would basically postpone the sequester. Uh, the fiscal deal would include permanent extension of middle-class tax cuts, okay, which are currently being defined as those making... And the, and the deal supposedly, those making over four hundred or under four hundred fifty thousand dollars would be the middle class. Um, 
The sticking point in the fiscal deal is the sequester delay. The White House is seeking a delay for a full fiscal year. And so they're trying to uh, work that one out. Uh, and the fiscal deal would uh, raise estate taxes from 35 to 40%. Um, and uh, the ex- expectation is for those for basically any estate worth more than $5 million. The estate tax, to me, is one of the most, like, horrible taxes. Okay? You die. You work your life. You work hard. You pay taxes on all the money that you make. You pay sales taxes. You pay, you know... Tax after tax after tax, and then when you die to give it to your kids, they want to take forty percent of it. That just—I mean, I don't know why, in any way, shape, or form, that even logically makes sense that they have a right to a single penny of it. But um, you know, it just absolutely blows me away. Forty percent, and what's what's really horrible is when you get people that have farms and things like that, and uh, you know, you think rich, but then the farmland—I mean, that can be worth quite a bit of money—and they have to sell off the entire farmland just to pay the tax bill. Okay. So uh, just it, it blows me away that there is any estate tax that there shouldn't. I don't. I don't understand how that even became an idea that was okay. But um, anyway, so they got that one going. Um, of course, there is no mention of the debt ceiling. Um, there are no spending cuts being mentioned, and uh, this is supposedly the best stopgap that we can uh, get. Uh, I mean, basically to get us to the debt ceiling debate that uh, in sixty days will uh, cause the country to collapse because it runs out of money today, by the way. So, happy New Year's Eve. The country is out of money, and now they're shuffling. And I'm uh, going to try to just put this one off and move on to the next thing. Um, so, basically, you know, the summary right there, I have another summary I'm reading right now. Um, the deal in the works would return tax rates on families making over 450 to 39.6%, the same level as under former President Bill Clinton. The agreement would also raise tax on estates worth more than five million from thirty-five to forty percent. Unemployment benefits would be extended for one year. Um, and let's see here. Yep, that's pretty much everything we got on it so far. And uh, so we see some guy running across the stage there, across the screen, but uh, nobody yet on stage. Obama is uh, making us wait as usual. But um, and so the markets are just chilling out to see what's going to happen now. So. Um, here are the four major indices. Got all those pulled up for you. And uh, you can see they're you know, doing a whole lot of nothing at the moment. And uh, let's see. We'll go in and have a little fun on this. Back it up to one-minute bars across the board. Because when you get onto an announcement like this, you sort of want to be on a very tight time frame. All right. So we got that. And then we could also, one of the things that's good to pull up whenever you're looking at any kind of major event like this, is to look at the advanced decline, the overall, basically the broad market index. All right, so let's go ahead and throw that one on there as well as we're waiting on him to come out and say, hey, basically what I just said, this is what we came up with. We'll see if something else comes out of his mouth. Uh, so we got the markets have rallied up all morning. They have basically flatlined since about 1140 Central, 1240 Eastern there. And uh, for about the last hour, really, they haven't done a whole lot more. And we did have a little bit of a boost at the end there. But uh, there's pretty much no major movement in stocks. And it's, everybody is just waiting and seeing um, what is going to happen, what he's going to say. So I don't know if we'll get to it in the next 20 minutes or not. Uh, it just depends upon um, if he decides to actually show up for the press conference that he's called. And, um, yeah, I'm sure there is uh, some... <laughs> if you're a politician, I mean, that's that's the ultimate job for insider trading. You can go on there. You can buy the futures. You can come out and say, hey, I think we got a deal. You know, let it run up, close it out. So I uh, would not be surprised if anything like that was happening out there. But, uh, you know, that's basically what happened this morning right here. A little report came out, and the market flew up. And uh, thinking, hey, we think we have a deal. And, uh, by the way, the, the announcements I just gave have been confirmed by both Democrat and Republican sources so far. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, let's see here. What do we got? Um, another interesting, uh, here's just sort of a random thing for you. In trade, they're a uh, binary broker overseas, and they do some really weird uh, binaries. And you can't trade them if you're in the U.S. Uh, CFTC has shut that down. But um, they're going in, and basically last night they had a 2% deal on the fiscal cliff to be averted, meaning 98% of people were bidding against it. So... It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Just trying to see right here if they still have that up or not. But um, yeah, they got, I mean, you can bet on the Academy Awards and everything else. It's pretty crazy. They are unregulated binaries 
um, in the sense of what we would call regulation. So as we go over here, and let's see here, just to show you here a little sneak peek. Here's C-SPAN feeding in Obama's remarks um, on the fiscal cliff that has started at uh, 1.30 <laughs> and uh, nothing going on. And the White House just has a nice, you know, oh, they actually did turn on the camera at the White House. That's good. So um, still waiting on both of them to come on up. But right now, I mean, basically it's tighten your stops, place binary trades, place straddle trades. Um, but the market is about to move one way or another. And there we go. Somebody came out. Oh, more people are coming out. All right. So sort of fun too, though. And I know this is you know, just a little bit different show right here, but obviously this is a different day. And uh, we go on here and uh, let's see. There we go. Yeah, we got all these people showing up. No president yet, but some other people. And we'll zoom in a little bit more to see here. There we go. I'll stretch this one out. And I don't even know who these people are, man. They always bring out random people for these press conferences. They're like, hey, how would you like to be on TV when he makes this announcement? He'll, he'll refer to people. Um, he'll go up there and he'll say, you know, like, you know, these people that need, you know, the middle class, we need to do the right thing by them. And the, the rich people need to go ahead and do this. And the poor people, you know, we got to take care of them. And, you know, uh, he likes to get a whole variety up there um he did the same thing when he was passing the health care bill uh he had some report last month and um where he was talking about all this stuff just going on and so let's see here markets okay they hear that obama's footsteps are coming out they're it's starting to drop a little bit dropped a couple points there in about a second so here we go <laughs> play by play come on man get on tv do your job yeah i know that's asking a lot so, okay, so we got a uh, market. We've got to figure out something else going on. Let's see if there's any other market we can look at while we're waiting on that. I'll scroll through and check a couple other things out. And the real, I mean, this is all eyes are right here, so it's hard to do much else. Um, tsh -tsh -tsh -tsh. Let's see what we got. All right, gold finished on up, starting to give it back. Let's see here. Oil is starting to head on back down. So we got to go ahead and pull that one up. And all right. So yeah, oil's dropping on down. Look at that. 92 and 91.58. It's already dropped like 50 cents. Let's see here. Those people, we don't know who they are. <laughs> and uh, let's see here. We'll check out gold. Right now we got silver. Silver's also pulling on back right now. Uh, let's see here. We can also go over. We can check out natural gas. Natural gas has been moving like crazy. Look at this. I mean, we're talking a massive, massive move. And uh, you know, 3% drop right there today on natural gas. And uh, something that's very cool, you can trade it over on Nadex as well. Oh, he's there. He's showing up. All right. <laughs> and uh, you got Ode over here. The Tigers didn't crack me up saying that they're all going to start singing this small world. But um, <laughs> anyway, so we got an uh, oil contract on up there. We're trying to see this anything else that's going to move along with this. But uh, the market seems to not be happy that he's shown up. It's pulling on back down. It's now, what, three, four points off its highs. And uh, here we go. See what he says. All right. So uh, less cared about what he says and more cared about what the charts do. So we'll focus more on that. You don't necessarily need the volume. You just need to see what the market thinks about what comes out of his mouth, not so much what comes out of his mouth. Because you need to be processing this, not this. Okay? And uh, so as we got that going on, let's go ahead and check out a few other things. We'll check out our deviation levels and push it on in there for the day on where we're at across the board. And uh, market is popping up right now. But I'm going to go ahead and just scroll through the deviation levels. And um, <laughs> we'll go ahead and put that up there. All right. So let's pull up the deviations for the day, and we'll scroll through them. I'll show you exactly where everything's at and how that could have helped you in your trading today. 
And uh, I'll do that while we leave at least the S&P up at the same time. Okay, so you can be watching that chart. And uh, so looking on over here, we got natural gas. And the deviation levels on that were down to uh, 3.4 or 3.382. Well, obviously it broke that. It went down to 3.38, broke that. Went on down a little bit lower, 3.295. And we did not get 3.295. We did get the 3.338. And so when it hit the 3.3, actually it didn't quite get 3.338. So right when it hit about 3.382, which is a one deviation, so that means that volatility was actually built into the market, then you should have been uh, tightening up your stops at that point. So looking on over here, we go in. We're just getting our crazy volatility happening right now in the market. But uh, it moved on down, and that's you would have tightened your stop at right at 3.382. So basically right here at the low. So it would have been a perfect call for you um, on getting out of the market when it dropped down to that level if you were riding that market down this morning. Looking on at over oil, and it moved on up this morning. And so it moved on up to, looks like we had a high at 91.95. That would have been a perfect deviation of 0 0.7. 91.98 would have been 0 0.7. So right there, you'd be looking to tighten your stops um, right before oil started giving everything back up. And uh, focusing on gold, and uh, gold moved on up to a nice little high. That we can see here on the high side, gold moved up to 16, let's see, 81, and uh, 1677.8 was one and a half. So it actually broke that 1677.8. Would have said tighten your stops, and would have just got knocked out, but you would have been able to get out at, the, you know, basically right at the high of the day, and uh, so it would have been a very, very good trade setup. Looking on over at silver, on silver right here, we can see that the market fell on down. But first, when it went on back up, it was up to a high of 30.465, and that would be 30.46 was actually an exact one deviation mark. So that's where you should expect the market to basically hit. As soon as it hits that, you tighten your stop, tighten it again on the bar that broke that deviation level, and then it turns on back down. You would have caught a majority of the move for the day. And then we go on down. We can check out our copper. So copper right here. Is showing us a high during the market hours 3.655, and on cop, checking this out 3.652 copper 3.643 would have been one and a half. So 3.643 basically right in this bar right here. You would tighten your stop, tighten it one more time, and you would even if you didn't tighten it, you would have caught at the end of the day there as the market closed on out. Checking out over on corn. So on corn right now, uh, looks like we went up to a high of 699.5. Again, that's a high of 699.5 on corn, and that would have been a move. 699.8 would have been half a deviation. So you've been right there. Could have tightened your stop um, as it got close, usually within a half a point or so. You want to be looking at tighten those stops. And um, even if you didn't, you still would have caught the majority of the move for the day. And looking on over at soybeans, it uh, dropped down before it moved on back up. It fell on down to 1401.25 to begin with. And uh, that would actually have brought it all the way down to 0.7, almost to a 1, but not quite to a 1. But the 0.7 deviation level on soybeans would have been 1403.1. So right about here, you're tightening your stops. And as you tighten that down, market pulls on back up. You were able to walk in your profits and not give them all back. We'll be right back after this break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk 
of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor, Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. Join David White as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. President Obama is currently talking about the fiscal cliff and the tax hikes and that he is not going to be the one to take all these spending cuts and that you know, Republicans just have it wrong. And basically, he's president. The people elected him, and he's going to be president for four years, so deal with it. Um, and so far, he says they are working hard on it, but they have not yet come to a solution. So we'll see um, you know, what comes out of that. But basically, a whole lot of nothing has come out of his mouth. And uh, so the market has – basically, it, it did go ahead and drop. It actually lost like 11 points. It was like, what, 10 points right there? Um, in a matter of about a couple seconds from its highs, gave that back up, falling on down, and uh, looks like it maybe one to edge lower. I, I can't imagine why, but uh, maybe one to edge lower. And uh, so I don't know. I, I'm looking for a gap fill, man. I'm wanting this thing to go down and fill back in at the settlement price of yesterday. We'll see if it does get down there, but um, we'll have to be watching it step by step and see how it comes on out. And uh, let's go ahead and wrap up. I was looking over at the deviation levels. Go ahead and wrap up the currencies for you right now. And because um, nothing uh, big is coming out of his mouth over there. He came on late, and then he says a whole lot of, you know, whatever. Talking about going over to people's houses and everything else. Um, anyways, the uh, the low price is, let's see, let me maximize. Let's at least stretch it out a little bit so I can see it. There we go. All right, so we got the low on the euro dollar. 
uh, 1.3171, and we had 1.3170 was our point seven deviation level, so great point. We could tighten your uh, stop right there. Market ran on back up. We're giving it on back up. Ran on back up again, and the dollar looking like it might want to gain some strength. And uh, so pushing on down, we'll see exactly how it turns out. But a uh, dollar looking like it's wanting to push on back down. Looking on over at the pound dollar. And pound dollar had a lot of strength, but the dollar might decide to go ahead and reclaim some of that territory before the day is done with everything that's going on. We got a high at 1.6273 on the pound dollar, which would put us at 1.6273, would put us just above one and a half deviations on that spike right there. So, uh, personally, I probably would have got stopped out somewhere right around here. Uh, but 1.6238, either way, that would have been a great trade. You've been right out where you're at right now. Looking on over and checking out the U.S. Yen. U.S. Yen, everybody's shorting the yen and buying the dollar. So, it looks like that might uh, continue with that trend if the dollar continues to uh, build strength. We'll see how it ends up. Um, but we got to move up to 86.67 on the U.S. Yen. And 86.68. Eight was one and a half deviations, but you definitely got the one deviation at 86.42. So right in here. So that tightens on up. You got a good chunk of the profit if you rolled it up to one and a half deviations. And uh, just kept tightening your stops. Either you got closed out here, or actually I guess you would have been right here right now because you still wouldn't have been stopped out. If you tightened it all the way up, you'd have been up at 86, about 60, 86.50, somewhere around there. And uh, been out of the trade. So it had a nice long US yen trade going on. Looking on over at the U.S. franc, and let's see what we got going on. U.S. franc has moved down to a low of 0.9120. So uh, U.S. franc 0.9120, nothing to even write home about. That really means nothing at all, literally. On the high side, uh, we had a high of 0.9165, and 0.9165 would have taken us just past the 0.7 deviation level. So if you did go ahead and get on and on that long trend on the way up there on the U.S. franc, then uh, that would have actually just helped you tighten out before it gave it all back up. And then looking on down over at the U.S. Canadian dollar, seeing how it's ending up right there. And uh, we see a low. We've got a big spike right there. Uh, I've got a low of 0 .9916. 0 .9916. Actually, it would have been past two deviations. Massive U.S. Canadian dollar move. And, uh, I mean, just flying up and flying back down. Anyways, uh, at least for the Canadian dollar, it's not the most volatile pair out there. And uh, so that's a very, very big move. Anyways, y'all have a great and happy New Year. Be safe, have fun, and um, enjoy yourselves. And I will see you again right here on TFNN on Wednesday. Stay tuned. we got another great show coming up for you. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability, because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today, because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.